So hello guys, uh, this is Yudai. So today we are discussing about you know uh, Darwin Box interview. So again there is Varshit with us, and again he made it to the final round for this company as well. So let us hear from Varshit. Uh, like so, hi Varshit. Uh, so can you tell us about the company? You know uh, what what it actually does. Uh, so hi again, Yudai. Uh, basically, Darwin Box is an uh, sorry Darwin Box is an Indian based startup. It uh, it focuses on HCM solutions. Uh, let me break it to you. Uh, HCM is nothing but human capital management. It is nothing but uh, it is used by uh, corporate companies to track the life cycle of an employee from recruiting to termination. Uh, like uh, they do some analysis based on his performance, and uh, on that analysis, they'll decide uh, whether uh, how much hike should they give him, like uh, all such things, promotions, etc. Uh, that's what HCM is. So Darwin Box provides a platform. For HCM solutions, like uh, it has developed an application for all HCM activities. So yeah, that's that's about uh, Darwin Box. Okay. Okay. Uh, so in short, if I want to say this, you know, uh, Darwin Box is a platform, you know, which manages the life cycle of the employees. So you know, from starting your offer letter to the ending of your termination letter, and uh, like if there is any onboarding activities or anything related to your uh, employee stuff, so. It will be it will be providing all the features, you know. Even we don't know that much depth, so yeah, that is the overview. So, Varshid, uh, like, uh, what is the criteria, you know, uh, to participate in this Darwin Box campus drive? Uh, actually, in my campus, like, it is specific to my college. Uh, it is an on-campus event. So, you know, uh, basically, company asked for uh, the top 120 skilled people. So, the college had uh, no chance but to sort this, uh, shortlist us based on CGPA. Uh, luckily, I was in the top 120. So, guys, uh, once again, I am telling this the people who are studying in our college, Gayatri University College of Engineering, Vishakapatnam. We uh, like don't neglect your CGPA. Even we thought the same until our third year. So, yeah, CGPA matters in your placement. So, don't neglect it. You know, the top 20 were, uh, 120 were shortlisted, and the least CGPA was somewhere around 8.8 .8 from our college. So yeah, that was the eligibility for the process. Yeah, and yeah, uh, maintaining around nine GPA won't be that much difficult in our college. So even if you study before a week, uh, you know, you can you can get that very easily. So don't neglect it. And uh, what I would suggest is, you know, uh, to increase your pointer in the starting semesters itself. So uh, even if you try on the later semesters to increase, you know. That won't be happening in most of the cases. The reason why I'm saying this, you know, you'll be getting some projects to do, some skills that you need to work. You'll be you'll be getting some lot of activities. So it'll be difficult to raise the pointer on the uh, semesters which are coming later. So uh, yeah, if you're in the beginning of your two years, so try to more focus on GPA to cross above nine. So then the average will be sufficient, you know, to participate in this on-campus rights. Yeah. Uh, so uh, yeah. This yes, people like uh, the first two semesters will be scoring semesters because yeah. all our uh, all subjects were common subjects, yes. and uh, you know the correction will also be easy. So yeah. Yeah. Okay. And uh, yeah, what are the number of rounds for the stab and box? Okay. Uh, after shortlisting 120 people, uh, they conducted an online assessment, but uh, it is uh, we wrote that exam in our college. So our college, uh, uh, our college staff arranged uh, some systems with webcams on them, and uh, we wrote the online assessment in the college itself. Coming to the online assessment, uh, there were 15, uh, sorry, uh, 11, sorry, 10 MCQs and four questions, and most of the MCQs were on JavaScript. Only the MCQs, there were some questions uh, in the 10 questions in which we have to select more than one correct answer. So be be careful with those questions. And somewhere programming, like uh, it was sort of a mix up of all the subjects again. Okay. After that, uh, there were three coding questions. Sorry, uh, earlier I said four. And the first question was based okay, on you're the assist. talking I... about the next round. No, the online okay, assessment. Okay, in the first round itself. Okay, yeah, okay, uh, There were uh, three coding questions after the answer case. The, the first question was an easy question. Uh, I'll just explain you the question. Uh, there will be an n cross m matrix given to you, which consists of either b or w a b represent represents a blank space whereas w represents a wall okay. so uh, if you uh, if you do, if you drop a bomb in a cell which contains b it spreads in the four directions and so on until you reach a boundary or you reach a wall 
I guess you understood my point there. Yeah, totally. Uh, until we see bees in all the four directions, it keeps on expanding, like yeah, yeah, yeah. keeps on traversing. So uh, the task is to find the maximum number of cells that could be destroyed with a single bomb. Okay. You have to select a cell such that if you drop a bomb in that cell, the maximum, uh, like the number of damaged cells would be maximum. Uh, that that's an easy question. The constraints were so, uh, the constraints were small, so I went with the brute force approach. Uh, uh, that is uh, uh, that went uh, like all the test cases have passed, and the second sum yeah, is a problem. Yeah, so the answer will be you know uh, the maximum size of the cells connected. So if you ah, yes. run graphs, uh, you know you will be knowing uh, maximum size of the component. You know it will it, ah, it, yes. it is a similar kind of question which is framed like uh, this. Just uh, size of the largest connected yeah. component. Yes, uh, like that. Uh, the second question is uh, number of subsets. Like uh, we have, uh, you'll be given an array, and you need to print all the subsets from the array, which have their sum equal to k. Okay. Yeah, that is a popular question which yeah. uh, I've solved in from weeks for weeks. Uh, you could try to search that. You'll easily find it on your browser. And you know, I solved it using basic recursion and sets. Uh, at first, I encountered some runtime errors there, but you know, I cleared it. Uh, I solved that sum too completely, yeah. and uh, coming to the third problem, that's a hard problem in lead code. You could uh, go search for that. It is scramble string. It is sum number eighty-seven in lead code. Uh, you know, it will take a lot of time to explain that question. You could just yeah. pause the video and look that question up uh, from lead code. Yes. Uh, so uh, you know, uh, I didn't solve that question completely. There was a small mistake in my logic. So only eight out of ten cases were passed, and uh, you know, each each test case. Uh, is of 12.5 marks, so uh, I only uh, got 75 of, out of that. Uh, so uh, that that's how the first round went, the first coding round. And out of 120 people who have written, only 12 people were shortlisted to the second round. Okay. Uh, and uh, how many second. questions uh, do we need to solve for the next round? So it is like two and partial. Um. I would say uh, one and partial. Uh, no, I guess it is two and partial. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, definitely, you need to solve two sums. Uh, see, you day like it is completely based on your uh, peers. Like, how do they write the yeah. exam and how did you write the? If all the people solved three problems, shortlisting will be based on MCQ. So, uh, I'd I'd rather say there's no fixed number on okay. how many problems to solve. Okay. So it is based on the relative performance. So. Yes. Whoever all the people are giving, so based on the relative performance, the top students will be qualified for the next round. Uh, I see. Okay. okay, got it. And what is the next uh, round? Coming to the second round, the second round is also a coding round, okay. which consisted of eight MCQs and two coding questions. Again, uh, the MCQs were based on the JavaScript, SQL, and coding, yeah. uh, like the basic C uh, pseudocode based questions. And okay. uh, coming to the two questions, uh, a question was of medium level. The first question was, uh, it will be a bit hard to explain. Uh, try to understand that. I will post a link for an image if you want it down there. Uh, you will give, you will be given a rhombus, which consists of n into two levels. Okay. And uh, I, I guess uh, it will be more clarity. Yeah, it will uh, be of more be clarity if I show you a picture. Uh, you know, uh, in that image, you could see some rectangles. Uh, sorry, some triangles. And all the triangles are numbered there. And uh, what happens there is that two triangles which share a common edge have an edge between them uh, which which share a common side assume all the numbers in the uh, like all the number triangles as nodes of a graph and there is an edge between two nodes two triangles share a common side uh, uh, am i clear like uh, did you understand the question yeah yeah, yeah. until now yeah yes so uh, uh, treat all the triangles as nodes of a graph and uh, an edge between two nodes is when the two triangles share a common side. That's how you should construct a graph okay. based on that rhombus. And then he'll be giving you a starting point. And from that starting point, you should give the shortest path to rest rest of the, all the nodes. Uh, the input is only n. It indicates the number of levels. Yes. Uh, and the condition is it'll always be even. If n is 2, you'll get four levels. Like in the first level, there'll be one node. The next level will be two, three, four. And the next level will contain five, six, seven, and the last one eight. Okay. Uh, if you see the picture, uh, you'll get more clarity. Uh, yeah. the, the difficult part in this question is graph construction. 
once you get uh, how to construct the graph, uh, the problem becomes easy. You could uh, simply apply a basic BFS on uh, the complete graph to get the distances. So think about it. It's an easy question. Right? Yeah. Uh, coming to the second question, it is also a lead code question. The question goes in this way. Um, you will be given an array again. And you should uh, you should divide the array into two subsets. Uh -huh. uh, the array should be completed into two sets. Okay. Such that uh, the the sum of two sets should always be greater than k. Like uh, we should count the number of sets, like uh, the number of divisions, the number of possible divisions, in which the sum of elements in both the subsets is greater than k. Okay. Uh, we need to count the number of uh, combinations like that. Uh, that, that seems to be that seems to be an easy question, but uh, it is tricky actually. If you directly get into finding the number of subset, the number of possible combinations, which this condition satisfies, you'll get stuck in a TLA. So the optimal solution for this problem was to you know you, you should count the number of possible subsets with some less than k, yeah. and then you need to subtract it from the total possible subset, subsets. Yes. That's how I solve this problem. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's with the round. Around, uh, I guess, 100 people from various colleges uh, have given this round. And out of them, only 12 people were qualified for the interview. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. And, uh, yeah, <coughs> I forgot to mention that, you know, uh, it is a pool campus, right? Uh, you know, where uh, multiple colleges participated collaboratively for this campus trip. And even for the last round of the Darwin Box, it was happened in uh, Geetam in the Vishakhapatnam. So, yeah. Yeah, then uh, apart from the first round, the last two rounds were conducted in a different college. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, coming to the interview, um, uh, only 12 of the 100 people were shortlisted. Uh, and I was also there in that list. And, you know, coming to my interview, uh, there were two rounds, one TR and HR. As you know, HR goes normally. Yeah. And uh, uh, so coming to the technical round, uh, I entered into the room. Uh, and uh, I sat before him, he asked my intro, and he went through my resume. Uh, out of which, the most interesting skills he found was Node and React. Uh, first of all, uh, he he asked me to explain about my projects, and I explained to him about that. And he asked me a series of questions based on Node.js, like what are synchronous and synchronous modes, you know, uh, what are promises in JavaScript, how did you perform routing using Node.js, and like what what Node.js actually is and how, what is it used for? How did you use this project? And there were several questions on Node.js. So if you are attending for the Darwin Box interview, make sure that you know completely about the project, not some random shit uh, uh, you you picked from GitHub and you dumped it in your resume. And, you know, not like that. Uh, just make sure you are prepared well and you could answer each and every point from the project and the technologies you have mentioned in the resume. So, uh, you know, the, the questions about my projects went for 30 minutes, or 20 minutes. And then he asked me a puzzle, uh, first time I've ever, uh, I've ever encountered in an interview. Okay. Uh, the puzzle goes this way. You know, you have a stone which weighs exactly 40 kilograms. Okay. Now, the task is to, you need to break the stone into four small stones, into four small pieces of different weights. Okay. That's that using those four stones you could you uh, you should weigh all the weights from 1 to 40 okay. uh, uh, i guess i am clear about the question yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, let us take an example if you break the stone into 8 9 and 11 and 12 okay if you if you are supposed to weigh if you, if you want to weigh 1 kilogram one side you will put 8 and the other side you will put 9 so the difference will become 1 so that's how you weigh all the weights. But uh, I'll tell the uh, think about the answer. I'll tell it at, at last. You know, I tried it for 20 minutes, and uh, you know, I also did get an idea. So you know, after that, uh, he asked me. A, it was based on uh, like uh, it was a lead code question. Uh, you could look it up. Buy, best buy best day to buy and sell stock. One. You know, it, uh, that's an easy question actually. It has two approaches: greedy and dynamic programming. Uh, Generally, in these kind of interviews, in such kind of interviews, the interviewer expects a dynamic programming approach from your side. So make sure uh, you pick out the optimal solution. And yeah, that's how the TR went uh, there. OK, OK. And so what all topics? They have asked one DSA question and the questions on your project. And also uh, sorry, I forgot, sorry, I forgot to mention. They asked me some questions based on DBMS2. 
uh, they asked me what uh, what are asset properties and he also gave me an sql query uh, the query goes like this uh, could uh, first he asked me a question whether i could uh, use group by and where at a time i said this and he told me to write an example query using both group by and where uh, i have written a query there so yeah, that's it uh, that's all what happened in the interview okay okay and after that there there will be a hr round right yes after that there will be a hr round and it will take somewhere around 2 weeks to get the result okay and uh, what is the pay that they offered uh, the base uh, sorry the cpt was 16 lakhs and the base was around 8 lpa huh. and uh, there was a bonus a variable bonus of 2.24 up to 2.4 I'm not sure about that. Yeah, uh, and uh, will it contain any internship? Yes, you have to do a six month. Uh, actually, it is not a full time opportunity. It is an internship opportunity which came to our college. If you perform well in that six months, like uh, it will get converted into a PPO. Yeah, got it. And yeah, are there any suggestions from your side? You know, for someone who is uh, preparing for Darwin Box. Specific to Darwin Box, uh, you need to be strong in your coding skills. Uh, problem solving skills as well as data structures and algorithms and the second point is as i've already said uh, don't just pick up something from github and dump in your resume make sure you know everything about your project and the technology is used and try to be honest with your resume and in the interview and you know that's all i can say about the tips okay, okay. Uh, yeah uh, coming to the suggestion from my side you know see daven box is a startup based company so even if you are trying for any startup based company try to make sure your development skills are, are very good and it doesn't mean that you don't need to have problem solving skills so here the first pillar is the problem solving skills so when i'm saying problem solving skills you know it is it is combined of both cp and dsa so if i uh, want to you know visualize from 1 to 10 steps uh, you know to get an offer so the starting five steps will be based on your problem solving skills even even varshit you know if he is made it into the final round it was because of his problem solving skills if you don't have that skill you know you won't be even making until the interview itself so so and and sometimes you know uh, it will be even enough uh, only the problem solving skills will be enough to complete whole uh, to crack the whole company process so yeah that is the suggestion from my side so if you are uh, uh, you know yeah yeah continue varshit Uh, just I want to add few more points. If you are sitting for any startups, first of all, think that a startup generally consists of somewhere fifty to five hundred or maybe thousand employees. So, uh, in such small companies, people expect you to have more skills rather than problem solving skills, more technical skills. You know, whenever you go to MNCs or uh, product based companies or very big corporate giants like TCS, Accenture, and all that. they have millions of employees you know even if you don't have uh, like even if you don't have any technical skills and you are good at problem solving they might hire you because you know they have many employees and they could train you after you get into the company they'll have time for all of that but coming to startups you know they'll have very less employees and they'll be overwhelmed with their work and there'll be no one to train you there so that's the reason they look for people with already some experience in the technologies which we are uh, in which they, they are requiring and you know they check out for all kinds of skills in there so that's uh, that's the major difference between startups and uh, big corporate games yeah uh, that is the exact point you know uh, if someone who can afford the training procedure you know they won't be looking at that much development skills so when you're uh, going to start up you know they don't have that much time so they'll be expecting those skills also from you so yeah if you are focusing any startup base so just be good at your development skills and along with your dsa skills right so that's all i think yeah uh, yeah that's all i think what should we have covered everything so it was nice talking to you again so see you again you know uh, just come up with another big uh, company interview experience we'll be waiting for you thank you again for this opportunity yeah